Hey guys, welcome to Brow Edit Tutorial number 7, which is producing or making a sky map. Alright, so before we begin, I would like you to download the tutorial map I provided in the description section of this video. So download that, unpack it, open it with Brow Edit. Also download the application XVI32, which a link is provided in my description bar as well of this video. So download that and uh, I believe it comes in a zip file, just unpack that into a folder on your desktop and have that open on the side as well. Okay, So now that we have the map opened, this is our tutorial map, I'll show you how to actually produce a sky map. All right. So the first thing I did was I went to texture edit mode and I, all I did was I textured a piece of land or a node draw zone that I would like to convert into a sky, sky map or a platform in this case. So I just, let's say I wanted that as my platform went to global height edit after that, selected the piece of land, increase its height by pressing page up like so. Of course make sure it's high enough so that you could build your model, your object borders which will represent like the uh, the mountainous or floating mountains that you can see over here or the I don't know, hills or the boundaries you could say and that's it. Okay so just build your terrain by lifting up an area that you, that you just texturize you know texturize the area so you got like a platform or so and then you can apply your, your borders around it, which is your models. So if I went to your, my model in this case, they're actually something like this. So you can see they're all bordered up and ready to go. As you can see, they have different angles. It's perfect for finalizing the cliffs of your platform, so keep that in mind. And that will be that, that piece will just represent your, your platform, okay? That's going to be your sky. Next, what I did was, if you wanted to build a hole in the middle of your platform so you could see the sky below it, all you need to do is place a transparent texture on a increased heighted node draw zone. So what I mean by is, was, if I went to my texture edit and I got rid of the texture here with backspace by placing texture on it, you'll see it's just a node draw zone, a raised terrain level, which is this piece here, the yellow stuff, up to up to this level here, and then just gave it a, no, a transparent texture, of, uh, texture itself. Now how did I get that? Well I found mine based off of something like this. I just highlighted the pink zone and that that's exactly what I'm going to be using now. How did I actually find that? Again, I just went to my textures menu, something like I don't know, pay on, you can choose this texture here, right? and there it is. Just select the node draw zone and paint that. Okay? So if I were to draw something like this, well technically you, you wouldn't want to choose something like this because you got some black stuff on it, but find a texture that has complete purple. So that way you could actually uh, produce a, a transparent zone so you could actually look through and see clouds and that's all I really did. Just I just reduced it, added a simple wall edit here so it kind of falls down and that's it. You could apply a, mo a glass model to look like you're stepping on a platform. It's completely up to you. And that's really it. That's, that's going to be my platform map. Now if you did actually put this into your brow edit, uh, if you actually put this into your server, then you would just see a black zone in the background. You won't see any clouds, you won't see any blue sky, it would just be a black zone. Also, what I should just remind you about is how the texture of this map slopes down into my object. So I, I covered this beforehand, there's a tool called Detailed Terrain Edit, just like this. And you can increase the radius by pressing plus or decrease by pressing minus. And if you go to Edit Slope Inc. and you and you just left uh, right click, sorry, right left click, it increases in height. Left holding left click and mouse button and then right click decreases in height. So just just pretty much play around with it and kind of make it slope down into the mountain. So that way the mountain object or the cliff object isn't you know looking like it's on top of the the, uh, the actual train, which looks ugly. Right, so just do something like that, and that's how you blend in your your objects with your actual platform itself. So after that's done, save the map and save it as something like a, a complete uh, line of, of characters. So no underscores, no dots, no spaces, just straight characters. Let's say up to five characters or less, or even six. Six would be fine. I don't think I think that shouldn't cause an issue, but uh, make sure that it's just a single line. So in this case, I say this as sky tut, one big line of characters, S K Y T U T, and that should work. So after we have that, let's open up our XVI 32 hex editor. So I'm on my desktop. I'm gonna open this up, and we have our 
Axvi Hex Editor 32 um, application. So let's run that. Now what we need to do is to open our exec executable client that we're going to run to actually start up Ragnarok or your server or whatever. So let's go find our client. So mine is just in a very simple beginner's Athena fo uh, folder. I just it's all set up for me. I don't really care about working with server hard, uh, uh, server uh, scripts and, and getting that you know customized because I'm just testing maps on this. So that's why I'm being very basic in this fashion. So I'm going to find my executable. Now it's called play, but as you can see, I create a backup file in case anything goes wrong. Make sure you always create your original backup file. Just call it play .back or your ever your server name dot back so it's a backup file. Now we're gonna open up our, our client. So this is what we get. It's all in hex. It's all good to go. And all we need to do now is simply replace the name of a already compatible sky map in the client with our own name of our custom custom map. Okay? And don't choose RWCL1 because that causes errors. Something I'd like to choose would be particularly a map that's never used. So let's say wither.rsw. Wither is a sky map, and I've never really played on it. I doubt people are going to play on it, so let's use that as our custom map basis for skying. Okay, so all I got to do is go to search. Let's find it now. So text, I already have a hit here, it's wither, and there it is. Wither is already in our client. It says wither.rsw. That's exactly what we're going to replace. Move your cursor above the wither name because that it needs to find the name first, and to do that, you have to put your cursor above it. I don't know why, that's just how it works. Then go to search, replace and then type in your text string here. So we're going to find wither. So type in wither. Click text to hex. It's very important. Then click the replace with button over here, which is text string. Type in sky tut, which is going to be our custom map. Hit text to hex. So now it's selected on hex string, hex string, because so, we're going to be replacing hex strings essentially. Hit OK. And you should see that sky tut is, uh, is now replaced with, uh, is, is, now re is now replacing the wither.rsw and that's it. Hit file save to save your actual uh, executable file and now let's do a quick check to make sure that it actually saved. I just have my a, a backup here on my desktop. So I opened up the folder with my play edited version and now we're gonna start it up. So it looks like it's okay the icon is still there. If your icon is missing you know you've messed it up. So please go through this again in case anything goes wrong to make sure you follow the correct steps. So let's start that up. I'm going to go start my server as well. Alright, so I started the server, started the client, and now let's go check the map. Now, before uh, be before you go any further, make sure, of course, you actually added your map to your map database, map underscore index kind of thing. You, you performed your map cache, whatnot. Now, this was uh, an original version of the map. This is not uh, this is not sky tut. This is sky underscore tut. So let's go to at warp sky tut. Let's take a look at it. And there it is. You can see the blue sky around it, you can see the clouds formation, and you can see the middle platform I told you about with the transparent texture. I'm kind of floating on it because I actually I didn't really care about GATS at this point of time, but uh, you can definitely see the sky below it, and everything looks like it's working perfectly, so keep that in mind. You can see some of this uh, here is actually um, drawing a light on it, a light source on it, which looks ugly. To fix that, just extend your terrain across the, the, the object so you got more there so and then also hide the terrain under the object itself. Lastly, I would like you to do is to actually no draw lighting on your object uh, as well. And to do that, I'll show you in just a second. So again, to to uh, produce a no draw zone of lighting on your object, just select your object in object edit mode, hit enter, and change the opacity from 1 to 0. 0 means lighting is not, uh, light, light shadows is not made, uh, drawn off of it one means it is. And that's it. That's pretty much it. And you've just created your first sky map. And uh, hopefully that actually helps you guys out with producing your sky maps in the future. And good luck on your mapping as well. Take care, guys. Bye.